rough estimate of between 60 and $90,000 of uh, new construction taxes coming on the books. Part of the discussion that was had at the finance committee meeting was taking into account the refunding of the 2011 A bond issue. So regardless of what was being done, the overall tax amount to the um, residents is going to be less regardless because the savings for the upcoming year from the um, bond refinancing is $355,900. So therefore, um, the existing EEV is also increasing. So you're definitely going to have a decrease in the tax rate. And then Lori, if you could put that one spreadsheet on. What we've always done for several years now is we've had a home that has a value of 233,000 and we've kept that constant. So it doesn't adjust for EAV adjustments. So there's, there's a constant there. And what you can see is from levy year 2015, when our overall total levy was over $35 million, that home would have paid $211. And as you can see, as our debt has gone down, uh, the current year, that home would have paid only 111. And even if they fully uh, increase both CPI and new construction, it would potentially go down to 105. And the difference um, between a 0% levy increase and a full <clears throat> levy increase is about $1.04. Um, so just to give you that idea, but keep in mind that $233,000 home has been held constant, hasn't fluctuated whatsoever. The biggest difference, as I said, is when we did the refunding, there's going to be a savings to the taxpayers regardless of what the commission does. But this is a budget for levy purposes based on the recommendation of the Finance Committee. Mr. Davis? I would say that in that discussion, Ken referred to this as being a factor, that, it would, that the dollar amount would go down. I, I would submit to you that it was the factor. It was, you know, that absent the ability to tell people that their bill was still going to go down as it has for five years in a row, we're, we're, we will basically cut it in half from 2015. If not for that, I don't think the discussion about accepting CPI would have gone the way it did at all. Um, but we have a very strong history to show people here. And you know, we've, we've always kept our promises to them about what we do with the money. So with, with those things in mind, the, the recommendation from the committee was that we pursue the CPI and new growth and still have the good news to deliver. Mr. Leonard? Yes, you know, um, piggybacking on Mr. Davis's comments, I think the reality for the taxpayer is um, by incorporating both increases, the new construction and the CPI, um, we're still reducing the average cost on the average home by $6 a year. If we didn't include the CPI, they're gonna have you know, instead of a $6 a year savings, they're gonna have a $7 a year savings. So, I mean, it's not a big deal. I mean, they're saving money. They're just, it's $1 less with the CPI, maybe $1.40. Now what we need is a motion to approve the tax levy for the fiscal year. Mr. Martin moves. I move. Mr. Leonard seconds. Is there a discussion on this? I'd like to add one, one, the two that have been made, if I could. And that is the other thing that we do is, and a point was made during the finance committee meeting, and I think it's important for this meeting. We, we've got a, op, we have an operation to conduct and, and we need to make certain that we've, for the, for the, for the land that, that the taxpayers have authorized us to purchase that we have enough money to properly administer the assets that we've acquired. And this is a pretty painless way of making certain that, that we, in, in fact, bring the money in here. And we've got, we've got, we'll have other financial issues because of COVID. Mr. Leonard? You know, I think on Mr. Martin's point, which maybe Ken, you could give me more clarification. When you take a look at the amount of acreage we had have had since 2015 to now, what has our uh, expense ratio gone? I mean, proportionally, it's not even close to imbalance. No, I mean, yeah, what we've taken on as far as management of the additional acreages, you can look, I think over the last like 
seven, eight years, we've maybe added a total of five positions. So we've been pretty stagnant. I think we're give or take right around that 75 mark. Um, and the only increases that we've really had has been whenever we've taken new tax levy dollars on. And as you can see from our prior discussions, um, our other revenue sources are now starting to go the opposite way, which is putting further constraints on what our ability is going to be to do. And there's uncertainty. We don't know where that's going to be. Just like, you know, for example, uh, the Gulf revenue. Until we do that RFP sometime next year, we don't know what we can put in the budget for the long term. So, I mean, you know, th there's some real uncertainties there that for me, you know, makes it a little scary because it's, what does that mean? How do we plan for that? And right now we don't have a lot of good answers. You know, and Ken, I guess to, to my point, um, look at the uh, num thousands of acres we've added since 2015 to now and look at our expenses, the proportions way out of whack. So, yes. you know, I think to Mr. Martin and Mr. Davis's uh, statements, you know, the Forest Preserve is doing a great job, I think, handling the, the expenses as they continue to increase and we have more and more acreage to maintain. Is there any other discussion? Uh, we're ready to vote. Kenyon? Yes. Gavist? Yes. Wegman? Yes. Starrett? Yes. Allen? Aye. Barrero? No. Leonard? Yes. Martin? Yes. Stands approved. Uh, presentation of approval, um, update of our investment policy. Yes. So what this is, is just a housekeeping item. We. Uh, Updated it back in 14 and is due uh, for a couple minor changes. We had this reviewed by our investment manager, Sawyer Feldudo, and there's two areas that we updated um, as required by the Illinois Sustainability Sustainable Invest Investing Act. We added language on page six to account for that. And then also on our corporate bond maturity limits, um, we're now allowed to invest up to um, three years where prior to that, it was only 270 days. We don't currently do that, but we thought it'd be prudent to add the uh, information to our um, policy. That way, if the district decides to go that direction at some point in the future, it already allows for it. And that language is altered on page four. So those are the only two changes to the investment policy at this time. Uh, Mr. Davis moves, Mr. Leonard seconds. Is there any discussion on this, Mr. Leonard? Yes, I'd just like clarification, Ken. So the second um, consideration we're putting in the corporate bond maturity limit, mm -hmm. what that is giving us the ability to do, say we have a 15 year bond. In the past, could we only increase that by 270 days? Now we could increase it up to three additional years? No, it, it, what it's saying is if we buy an investment, we could only have bought it if there was less, uh, best, less than or equal to 270 days till okay. maturity. Now we can go out and buy a three-year um, bond. Or, for example, if it's a 15-year bond and it's 12 years in and there's three years left, we have the ability to go out and purchase it. Beautiful. Thank you. Any other discussion? Anything from the telephone people? We're ready to vote. Kenyon? Yes. Gavist? Yes. Wegman? Starrett? Yes. Helen? Aye. Barrero? Yes. Leonard? Yes. Martin? Yes. It's approved. Uh, under land acquisition, I see nothing. And then we go to planning and utilization. Presentation of approval of a bid for native seed for the use for the natural restoration district lands. Young Ben will tell us about that. Yes, so this is our annual seed purchase. We've got uh, four options. Um, I won't go into details on all, all four of them, just on this slide. Uh, Burlington Prairie is part of our Bobolink uh, Prairie Restoration. That's an 03 funded effort. We have uh, Burlington North is our, the most extreme Northwest hay field out there would also be a hay to prairie conversion. Hannaford Woods is the uh, soon to be acquired 
uh, remainder of the Canerum parcel. We'll get that seeded to um, kind of a unique mix that's specific for turtles, turtle nesting. Um, and then the Bowes Creek Forest Preserve is a 30 acre prairie restoration that's being funded by um, a Jack Muirhead, a descendant of the Muirhead family um, in honor of his family up there. Pretty excited about that one. Kind of slide on the sure. <laughs> So the RFP went out to 24 different vendors. We received three responses um, in total. I'll bring your attention to the bid from Genesis Nursery being significantly lower than what we have highlighted as the low bid. We have about 150 different species on this mix. They only, they left out about 85 species. So we don't see that as a, it certainly isn't a qualified bid. Uh, AES on the far right only put in for one. Um, at Bowes Creek and it also was high. Um, so we're happy with Shooting Star Native Seeds. They've also partnered with Prairie Moon Nursery. Uh, you can see the amounts there at Burlington South. That's the Bobolink Prairie Restoration, $100,000. The Lenshaw Field, $63,909. Kinnearum Field, $27,297. And the Jack Muirhead donation, just over $50,000. How many? Did you put this bid out to how many? It went out to 24 different vendors. It's a little bit different this year in that we insisted on individually packed seed in, in, in uh, subgroups of seed mix. Last year we did just individual species and it was difficult to, to do the financing end of it of which seed went to which project just with 150 different species. It became a bit of a onerous task. Uh, we'll need a motion. Deborah Allen moves. Uh, Mr. Leonard seconds. Is there discussion on this? We're ready to vote, I guess. Kenyon? Yes. Davis? Yes. Wegman? Yes. Derrick? Yes. Allen? Aye. Barrero? Yes. Leonard? Yes. Martin? Yes. And next is presentation of approval of bids for tree and brush clearing at Pingree Grove, Long Grove, Bowes Creek, Greenway. And again, Ben will tell us what's going on. Yes, again, this is our uh, annual tree and brush clearing <coughs> monies primarily, um, with the exception being uh, the Bowes Creek project, project four, which is funded um, from a different line item uh, from the Bowes Creek HOA out there. So, the first project, uh, there's two different options at Long Grove. No problem, we'll get the map here. And then um, project one and two, this is a follow-up. Uh, we did just north of here. Um, last year, you can see the woods that's not uh, highlighted, but that's all clear now. A 2020 air photo would show that. Um, we had two different low bids for that. Uh, project one went to Central Forestry out of Hampshire. Um, and the amount of $38,269.65. And the smaller option went to Integrated Lakes Management out of uh, Waukegan, $5,457. Both of those are within budget. We work with uh, all of the vendors here. Uh, this went to 27 vendors. We had seven responses. And then we'll just do the other two as well. Um, the next one here is at Pingree Grove. It's a, I think it's about 12.6, uh, yeah, it's 12.6 acres. This is on the east side of the big marsh out there. It's primarily buckthorn and some invasive willow, and this is uh, marsh restoration. So we want the woody material out of this one. This one also went to Central Forestry at $27,750. You can see their bid is significantly lower than the competitors. Again, this went to 27 vendors um, with was that six responses? One was almost ninety thousand dollars. Our low bid is twenty-seven thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars. Um, their shop is right across the street from this. is is really why it's so cheap. They don't have the transportation costs as some other people, so we're not at all concerned at the low bid. Delighted, in fact. Um, we need a motion for this, Mr. Leonard Mose. Ms. Weichman seconds. Got to get you on the boards, you know. 
Is there any discussion? Seeing that, we'll vote. Kenyon? Yes. Gavist? Yes. Wegman? Yes. Starrett? Yes. Allen? Yes. Burrow? Yes. Leonard? Yes. Martin? Yes. <clears throat> Next is presentation of approval of the bid to construct required site improvements at the Kane County Events Center associated with the Kane County Division of Transportation Kirk Road Bridge over the Union Pacific Road Project. You're going to talk about it, going to tell yeah. us about that. So just last month, we had brought forth the agreement with uh, KDOT regarding this project uh, right in front of the uh, stadium along Kirk Road. The agreement provides for easement locations so that the county can utilize some of the land, which right now is um, has Cherry Lane going around the back of uh, the stadium. Um, so what they're going to be doing is replacing the bridge and then in the widening of the bridge and the roadway accommodate a turn lane that will come into Cherry Lane into the stadium. Uh, part of that contract with the county was that the county would provide funding for the district to um, bid this project that's before you. And so this has been in planning for a while. So we were able to budget uh, $548,555 for the project. That was the original engineer's estimate. And then with some modifications, their estimate went up to 573,000. Uh, the project was bid and came in at $495,181.62. Uh, it went out to 34 vendors with 11 responding. So we had really good response. Um, Lori, can you go back to the, the map there? Um, just to show everybody what's being done. So you can kind of see the, um, the existing conditions and then you can see the lines over top, the existing conditions. So what'll happen is when you come into Cherry Lane, um, the entire roadway is going to be ground and re-asphalted. And then at the location where the bridge is gonna be right behind the band shell, there's gonna be a new parking area put in and the roadway is gonna be realigned closer in to the band shell um, simply because of the bridge and the wall that will now be existing at that location. Once you make the bend and you come around to the maintenance shop, that whole entry drive will be asphalted. You'll come around to the backside of um, the, um, the outfield rental areas. And this is where the handicap parking is to come up into that area. There'll be a new handicap parking put up the main parking lot will be ground and uh, resurfaced. And then that one strip that kind of goes around that parking that, that allows for a loop, that's going to be eliminated. This whole area is very wet. And so we're trying to make accommodations here that would also make for um, some better natural areas management while also providing a much better roadway surface uh, for the facility. So uh, the project, once it's awarded, um, KDOT actually will be managing it for us, um, but the process has to go through us simply because of um, the grants that they have, and this portion was not included in those grants, and so that's why it's kind of being done separate. So we need a motion. Mr. Leonard moves. Mr. Martin seconds. I have a question. And Mr. Martin has a question. When you refer to Cherry Lane, I presume that... Um, that designation doesn't mean that that's a public road. That that's that's interior to our property, and the Forest Preserve maintains that. Or does the county? Is Cherry Lane, in fact, a? I believe the city of Geneva has been doing work on Cherry Lane. Yeah, that is a public road. No kidding. Mm -hmm. I'll be there. Yeah. So, I would, so they're doing it. I mean, the, no, no, the Cherry Lane is the, the drive that comes in at the light. It's, it's no, no, just off the map. This is our access drive. So right. nothing's being done on Cherry Lane. Okay. KDOT's doing the Kirk okay, Road so project up to Cherry Lane. That, that, that's, that's the only Cherry Lane. I'm, I'm yeah. looking at pictures and trying to understand it. So it's, that's Cherry Lane is what dead ends into the, into Settler's Hill. That just serves straight back and. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Oh, we're ready to vote. Kenyon? Yes. Davist? Yes. Wegman? Yes. Starrett? Yes. Allen? Aye. Barrero? Yes. Leonard? Yes. Martin? Yes. It stands approved presentation and approval 
of change order number one for Evans and Sons Blacktop for the Fox River Trail, South Elgin Switchback and Trail Connection Project. So in June of this year, we awarded a contract with Evans and Son Blacktop of West Chicago to modify uh, the Fox River Trail as it's coming down along the Fox River in downtown South Elgin. Uh, the project is relatively complete, but there were some issues on site um, that needed to be taken care of. One was some larger tree removal we weren't expecting, and then there was also debris removal mainly garbage and larger debris that was uncovered when um, brush was being removed to get this site prepped um, for the trail um, switch back to get you back down to Center Street. <clears throat> the uh, change order is in the amount of $3,724 and um, we would like to uh, move this forward for approval. Mr. Leonard moves. Mrs. Allen seconds. I would suggest there might be something done to Put the switch back so that people don't cut across the grass when we put new grass there. Yeah, we've talked maybe about maybe a some with alligators or something like that. Or <laughs> a wetland, <laughs> wetland creation. Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, if there's no more discussion, we're ready to vote. Kenyon? Yes. Davis? Yes. Wegman? Yes. Starrett? Yes. Allen? Aye. Ferrero? Yes. Leonard? Yes. Martin? Yes. Okay. Stands approved. Presentation approval of IDNRTP grant submission for an interpretive trail and signpost project at the Mill Creek Greenway Forest Preserve. Monica's going to tell us about that. Right. So several years ago, the district purchased uh, this parcel through the um, IDNR's OSLAD program and the requirements of the grant state that within three years um, the district would open the land to the public and so what we always do in these cases is we immediately go back once we're prepared to do that we go back to the DNR and request a grant whether it's a larger OSLAD grant for a um, for a whole new preserve or it's a project like this which is a recreational trails program grant which is going to accommodate a parking lot shelter restroom and kiosk and some water. And the ultimate goal here, which is along Brundage Road and Ben's shop is right there, is to connect us over to the east with this purple trail, which is future, and connect us over into uh, Prairie Green, which is the city of Geneva's project. And so um, what we'd like to do is get permission from the commission to apply for the DNR's recreational trail program grant. And um, our project estimated cost is $473,000 to do those improvements um, that I listed. And the grant reimburses uh, up to uh, $200,000 for the project. And so we would ask for also the full amount of the $200,000 in the reimbursement. We'll need a motion. Mr. Martin moves. Mrs. Allen seconds. Is there a discussion? We're ready to vote. Kenyon? Yes. Davis? Yes. Wegman? Yes. Starrett? Yes. Allen? Aye. Ferrero? Yes. Leonard? Yes. Martin? Yes. Is it approved? Presentation and presentation approval of a maintenance agreement with the Knights of Columbus to maintain the grotto at the Gunner Anderson Forest Preserve. So the local Knights of Columbus group has approached us about permission to maintain this grotto <clears throat> structure that is located here on the government center campus, but is on the Forest Preserve's property. Uh, the local Knights of Columbus group represent numerous churches, um, mainly of which are Batavia, Geneva, and Elburn. That's where uh, most of their members come from. But um, their maintenance agreement would provide that they would maintain the grotto structure and also 30, a 30 foot buffer around that um, for some um, tree, um, I'll say natural areas maintenance, but really it's just kind of making sure that shrubs and uh, low lying vegetation is, is cleared from the area. They would work directly under um, Ben in natural resources, as well as Rob Cleave, our volunteer coordinator in getting anything approved and any of the work that they would wanna do here. So any of their work days would be under our volunteer group. The agreement itself is for three years, 
anything that the group wants to do um, in terms of any improvements to the structure would have to come through the planning and utilization committee. They're talking about possibly hiring a consultant or an art type expert to look at the mosaic tile that's on the structure and see what would need to be done to fix that. And so um, this agreement for the next three years would be under uh, our supervision. We need a motion. Mr. Martin moves, Mr. Davis seconds. Is there a discussion on this? I think that Ben, hmm? Ben and Rob should have contact information for Phil Lewis. This was remember. This, this was call Phil so he can come he, and he was and work on. He this. was really enthusiastic about. We haven't this, heard this being taken know. care of, so it's probably a volunteer waiting for you there. All right, we're ready to vote. Opinion. Yes. It is, it is um, the local um, Knights of Columbus group, but they don't represent any one community. It's a grouping of Elburn, Batavia, and Geneva that make up this particular club. Uh, we're ready to vote. Kenyon? Yes. Gavist? Yes. Regman? Yes. Starrett? Yes. Allen? Brero? Yes. Leonard? Yes. Martin? Yes. Stance approved. Is there any new and unfinished business? Seeing none. Is there any communications? What's the selection day holiday? <laughs> Katie's going to talk to us about that. What happens if I already voted? <laughs> already voted? Yeah. So earlier this year, um, the governor passed some election reforms. You guys probably know this from the county board stuff already, right? Um, and for 2020, election day has been designated as a state holiday for local yes, it has. government. Um, there's been several lawyers that have asked for some clarification on whether or not we really need to be closed or don't we need to be closed and no clarifications have come yet. So at this point in time, we're just going to follow it and uh, be closed except for obviously the people of school. So all Forest Preserve employees could be election judges and make an <laughs> extra 200 bucks. We don't need to vote on this. We just no, it's a requirement, so there is no voting. It's We've been told we have to do it. It was just a communication. I will comment that when I went over to vote, it went so smoothly, I, you can't believe it. You know, it's, everybody thinks it's going to be bad, but... And I even got to meet our old friend, Mr. Jim Mitchell. So that was a bonus. bonus yeah. yeah, bonus. Um, I need a motion to put the financial reports on file. Ms. Wegman moves, second by Mr. Leonard. We're ready to vote. Yes. Javist? Yes. Wegman? Yes. Starrett? Yes. Allen? Burrow? Yes. Uh, Leonard? Yes. Martin? Yes. They approved. Now we need a motion to adjourn. Stare it. Stare it. Oh, she's quick. <laughs> Stare it moves to adjourn. Second. I was first Penny here today, Wagner. too. So. <laughs> yeah. But it keeps you awake, Susan. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> All in favor, say aye. Uh, aye. We're adjourned. <laughs>